Hello and welcome to this new Construct 3 demonstration where I will show you how to create this physics block game. Now the idea of the game is pretty simple. You need to get the yellow blocks into the green area. So you can go and drag. And as you can see, you can go and drag everything around and the idea is to exactly fill up this area. But you cannot go beyond the black border. You can see that. So you need to find a way to get this thing totally filled up. Let's see, there are possibly several ways to do this, but when you see it, now we have it, it's filled up. So as you can see that if I try to move this block, it doesn't budge because this one is in the way. So whenever there is some block in the way, you see that you cannot move it. So how does that work well this is the main layout of the game um, where you can see that there's actually um, what we see here is a, a tile map which is on the UI uh, uh, on the board layer sorry and on that board layer you get this UI and then there's the blocks layer where you get these uh, little blocks there's a background and there's also a UI. So how does this work? The thing is, you have seen that if you go and move them around, uh, it doesn't budge when it bumps into another block that's already on uh, the layout. Well, uh, that's because it uses physics. Um, so these blocks here have got the physics behavior um, and the essential thing in this physics behavior that they have a really really high linear damping so by setting this uh, linear damping very high the, uh, the the blocks won't budge when you bump into them if it were a rather normal coefficient like between 0 and 1 they would go bumping into each other and it would fall and stuff like that um, but that's not the idea we just want the the effect uh, of the of the physics where uh, the, the the block won't budge uh, whenever you bump into it so that's it you want the linear damping to set to 99 this uh, example and also we use the collision match use uh, collision polygon and if and that's just very important in this game I'm going to double click um, and as you can see uh, there are two important things to see here first of all uh, there are three animations a1 a2 and a3 I'll come back to that in a minute why that is because in this you have one square of a block here you have two squares so I can divide this in the middle and you have two of those to a1 make an A2 and an A3 there are three blocks one two three and also here one two three and I'll come back to that in the middle why there are three animations um, but very important if I go here and edit the collision polygon you can see that the collision polygons are really special first of all the edge of the collision, uh, collision polygon goes a little beyond the edge of the uh, actual uh, content of the image and also the edges are a little bit scraped off you can see that here and that's because it makes it easier for uh, to move the blocks ar around because you have little space here between the edge of the sprite and the edge of the collision polygon and also if you go uh, move uh, beyond go from here to over there for example you go beyond the corner it's easier to move beyond the corner because every single block has this uh, slanted edge here um, so that's very important to see that so let's look at the code if you look at the code um, actually what happens is on start of layout we just scroll to bang in the middle and how do we do that we just scroll to the tile map x plus the width divided by 2 and the y plus the height divided by 2 um, because the uh, center of the tile map is not or the origin of the tile map is not banging in the center it's at the top left so what we need to do is take the x coordinate and add half of the width to it and the y coordinate and add half of the height to it
and then we do something pretty important first of all we set the world gravity to zero otherwise they would all fall to the bottom of the layout and that's not what we want so we set the world gravity to zero um, and then we come to uh, the fact that uh, as we use blocks with physics and you can see here these blocks i come back revisit this a1 a2 and a3 um, bigger blocks in physics have higher density which means that when we go moving them around and we would not uh, set the density uh, manually here in code what would happen is once we move the blocks around um, the lighter blocks would move very fast and the heavier blocks would move very slowly but instead we want every block to move in the same kind of speed and that's why we do a little formula based on the density and that little formula is based on the most right character of the animation name so remember if it's a1 a2 a3 what we do here is we pick the rightmost character which will result in one two three and divide it by uh, make it the denominator and the um, and this calculation uh, 0.2 divided by uh, that number and by doing that we essentially give it proportionally the same density so they move in the same direction and the same speed and we set the block to immovable um, and that's the standard and we'll see later that the block are made movable once we start dragging them around um, and then the second question that begs to be answered is how do we not go beyond the border how do we not go beyond the actual uh, uh, board well that happens actually by at runtime at the start of the layout we're still on the start of the layout here by uh, starting by creating an object and and there is an extra time lap here border tm which is uh, an extra uh, time map. Uh, we create that time map and we create it at the uh, position x minus 32 and y minus 32. So we set it to uh, the width and the height we wanted to set and then we set all of the tiles uh, with an area of 30 by 30 to 0 which is normal. And then what we do is we set all the tiles to 0 and then we loop through the entire uh, um, width and height of the tile map divided by 32 because it's got 32 uh, a block of 32 and uh, what we do is we loop through them and for every loop if the tile of the tile map so the tile we are using to create the blocks is actually uh, bigger than zero because if we go and look this um, event parameters for tile compare tile at will detect a tile um, at the x and y coordinate yeah? and if it is zero then it will return uh, one and if it is not zero then I believe it will turn return a value lower than one so that's what we check here and then if that is so so if it's not one of these this will be uh, this uh, logic so erase the tile at that x and y coordinate but the tiles here are one based and these loops are zero based so we add one and then we wait for zero seconds to get to the next loop and we've set the physics enabled for this border time up so uh, it will also bump into those uh, little border tiles and that's how it works um, so the blocks movement uh, when the touch movement is touching the block what we do is set the movable for that block all the rest is not movable um, and we also set a flag active to true and we also retain the uh, touch x offset and touch y offset um, 
what we do is we take the x coordinate of where we are touching and we subtract the image point x center of that block so if we're going to check this we'll have also a center which is dead in the center but it becomes more difficult here for example here we also have one and it's also dead in the center you can see that here um, and what we do is we subtract that from that x and from that y and while it is active we are going to uh, that means we are touching it and we are moving it around and we are going to apply an impulse and that impulse um, and the impulse we are going to apply is a distance function a distance uh, accepts two uh, parameters x and y and another two parameters x and y so the first two parameters here here which are the center image point of the block we are tracking around and then the other uh, image point is again the touch minus the touch offset we are using here we uh, selected here um, and then we're going to uh, apply that to touch x uh, minus touch uh, offset x and touch y minus touch offset y in the image point center so we are uh, we're starting from this vector and we go this position and we're going to apply a vector an impulse towards uh, a certain direction and that the impulse will be the distance between this image point center and the uh, touch x and touch x offset touch y and touch y offset um, divided by 20. so what happens if for example we don't do that touch x offset you might have wondered why the hell do we do that so let me just comment that out and let you see what the result is that's always a good idea so if we start from dragging right in the center you can't see any difference but suppose we start dragging light light in this corner for example see what happens it need it's it's it snaps automatically to the center and that's what we don't want we just want to click somewhere and wherever we click there will be the the grappling hook or the, the point we are picking up that little block and that's why we do that here because actually what we do is we detect the point where we effectively click the block and we calculate the distance to where we uh, where the center of that block is and when applying the impulse we also always take into account that little offset to compensate for the fact that we don't always take it up uh, pick it up smack in the center that's what we do here so finally when the block ends and the touching ends and it was active we snap into the uh, we snap into position by setting the position to uh, by rounding off the x and y coordinate of the block itself uh, dividing it by 32 and multiplying it by 32 and by doing that you effectively set it to a multiple of 32 uh, the same counts for uh, the y coordinate we deactivate the active flag so this does this does not activate anymore this impulse and then we set it immovable and that's how it works it's very simple um, so that's it I hope you enjoyed it I'll leave a link in the description of the video to the template um, and this template I've just explained to you is free and there's also a paying template for uh, with a lot more functionality you can see that here you can find it on the Sira store and it's got a loading screen level selection menu a number of samples and stuff like that okay thank you and see you next time